Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial in my Making Snake and End Curses tutorial series. Um, if you haven't seen the previous tutorials, please go check those out, um, otherwise you'll be a little confused here. Um, also, these tutorials assume you have a basic knowledge of end curses. Um, if you don't already, I recommend going to check out my other series where I go over the basic topics in end curses. Um, this is, series is more to apply those topics and less to learn them, so um, feel free to go check those out. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, how to actually create the game loop in our uh, snake game. Um, if you like these tutorials, please consider giving them uh, this video a thumbs up and um, subscribing down below and hitting all notifications. That way you'll get these tutorials right when they come out. Um, and feel free to leave any comments below that um, you have. I, I always answer. So anyways, let's just get started here. Uh, so there are a couple changes since my last tutorial, um, which I'll put a little card to above um, that I've made. So essentially, uh, I've had to make a few changes to the board class. So I'm just going to go through those now. So <clears throat> I had to create a, uh, a default constructor for the board. Um, just a little, added a little comment here, said added. Um, so uh, go ahead and add that. Basically what I've done is I've created a, a private method called construct, which essentially handles the construction of our um, class. That way we can have um, an empty, sorry, a default constructor and um, a constructor that takes parameters and they both just run this construct function. Um, so that's one change I've made here. Uh, basically, I just took what was in board before and put it down into this construct class or sorry method. So um, that's that's all you really need to do to get that working. Um, then I have also created a class called uh, snake game um, and I put that in the source folder here. So you'll see it just includes ncurses.h, it includes board.hpp, so that way we can um, include a board in our class. And it has these methods, which I will be filling in during this tutorial. Uh, so if you need to pause and fill this in, you can, but we'll be coming back to this in a moment. Um, and then um, I've also updated the make file just to include our snake game. So anytime we uh, update this file, it knows that we need to remake our, uh, our main function here. Sorry, our main class or our main file, I guess. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So almost every game has a main game loop. Um, today we're going to be going over basically the simple version of our game loop because it's going to get more complicated and more full featured as we move along. But the basic steps in any game loop are as far follows. First, you get input from the user uh, and you process that input in some way. Uh, it's usually more than just getting it. You, you have to do something with the input, um, make sure that it's correct, that kind of thing. So first we get input from the user. Then with that input, we can, um, once it's processed, we can update the game state. So this would be, you know, for instance, in our snake game, maybe we have to move the snake one position or we have to update the score, something like that. That's updating the game state. Then um, after we've updated the state, we can redraw the display so the user can see the new information. Um, and then at that point, we basically go back to step one unless we've reached some sort of game over state, um, which in this case would be, you know, the snake runs into itself or runs into a wall, that kind of thing. Um, so the way we're going to be making this is actually by using this snake game class. Now, the reason why I had to create a uh, default constructor for board is because down here in our private section we have board board and uh, C++ gets mad at you if you don't have a default constructor um, when you create a uh, method or sorry a member variable like this so um, and then I've also created another member variable called game over um, so what this game over is it's basically just going to tell us whether or not the game is ended or not um, so the first method we have in our snake game class is this, obviously the constructor snake game. It's just going to take an, a height and a width right now. It might change as we move along, but it starts with just a height and width. And what we're going to do with that height and width is just create our board. So uh, we'll say board equals board height width like that. So now we have a board within our snake game. This snake game class is meant to be like the main uh, controller class essentially. Um, it might be a little big, it might be kind of a monolith controller class. We might break it break it down into uh, smaller uh, controllers later on, but for now we're just gonna 
have snake game kind of be our main controller so it's going to contain a view here which is the board and as we move along it'll contain other things like the uh, snake and the apple uh, things like that which are uh, the models of our uh, example here so <clears throat> now that we've created our board within our uh, constructor we also need to set our game over state to false by default um, because ideally we're not already in a game over as soon as we start the game um, that would be pretty bad I don't know how the user could do anything then <laughs> um, so uh, the next thing we're gonna have to do as part of our game state is get some input from the user and process it so I've created a method called process input and what process input is going to do is very simple. It's just going to, um, at least right now, it's very simple. Uh, it's just going to get um, the input from, actually I'll call it input, from the board. So board get input. So that was a function we created, or sorry, a method we created in the last tutorial within our board class here. Uh, get input. It just does a w get char for the board win. So we're going to get that input, and then at some point, in the future, we'll actually do some processing of the inputs or process the input. But for right now, it just basically gets some input. Um, then uh, we're going to have an update state function, or sorry, method, which again, right now, doesn't really do anything because we don't have anything to update. We don't have a snake. We don't have a score. We don't have anything like that yet. But um, in the future state, this method will actually update the state of the game, which will then allow us to redraw. So for right now, all we can redraw is the board. Uh, so we'll do a board uh, refresh like that. Um, and what that's going to do is it's just going to uh, refresh our board. Uh, simple enough. So, um, so what we have here so far um, is pretty good, but we still have to uh, populate this is over uh, method. So this is just going to return the uh, value of the game over uh, method or sorry, game over member variable. Uh, for the terminology, I can just never get it right. <laughs> all right, so now that we've uh, set all that up, we can actually update our main file here and um, start using that class we've created, which is very simple at this point, but as we move along, it's going to get more and more uh, detailed and um, more and more effective uh, at what we're trying to do. I'm going to get rid of the sidebar here because it's not really that important. Um, it just takes up space. So now that we're creating a board within our snake game class, we don't have to uh, create one ourselves here. Um, you could technically create the board and pass it to snake game. I'm just going to have snake game make the board. So what we'll do instead is we'll say uh, snake game uh, game equals um, snake game. And then we'll pass it the uh, width and height, which is uh, board rows, board calls. Sorry if I type a little slow. I'm, I'm reaching around my microphone right now to, to do this. So um, it's a little awkward and inconvenient. Uh, I'm wondering why it's giving me a squiggly on that um, snake game. I think I'm just, yeah, that's right. For this kind of thing, I would just do that. Yeah. Um, so why is it giving me a squiggly still? Expands to board dim, blah, blah, blah. Snake game is inaccessible. Huh, why is it inaccessible? Oh, I know why. It's stupid me. Okay. Don't forget to put public. <laughs> you have to put public at the beginning. Otherwise, everything's private by default. I always forget about that in C++. Anyways, that should fix the problem we were just having. Um, so we can go snake game game, pass it our board rows and our board calls, just like we did um, in the... Uh, previous tutorial for the board that actually reminds me what we need to do within this is we have to do a board dot initialize which um, we'd also done previously within our main so we want to make sure we do that here as well um, so now that that's all done we can actually start making the game loop so uh, for our case it's going to just be a while loop where we check to see if um, the game is over so we'll do game dot is over so we want to keep looping basically until the game is over. This will basically take care of step four for us. Um, so step four is kind of at step one right now, but uh, it's the same idea. Um, so, so now that we've done that, let's just take this and put this in here and we'll, we'll get rid of step four because we already took care of it. 
Um, so now within the game loop, we can say, okay, we want to check if, uh, or we want to get some input from the user. So process input. Um, once we've processed our input, we want to um, update the game state. So update state, game.update state. Um, and then finally, we want to uh, redraw the display. So we'll do uh, redraw like that. Um, and now I believe with all of this in place, we can make this and run it and it should uh, loop until we hit control C basically. Oh, game. Oh, sorry. While game is not over is what we're checking for here. Not if game is over. So we want to loop until game is, uh, until game is over. So while game is not over, we want to keep looping. So sorry, confusing there, but now with that all done, uh, we can make that and let's clear this and run it. And you can see now it's just going to loop until we um, exit out. But obviously I have I don't have no echo on. So that's actually something we can get out of the way right now. Um, we'll just set no echo uh, right at the beginning here. Uh, we could technically do this within the snake game initialization. I, mean, I don't know. It. So it's up to you. It's kind of semantics at this point. But um, now if we do uh, the same thing where we make and run, we get no echo and it, I'm pressing keys here, but it's just not doing anything. Um, it's just looping here. So uh, at this point, we have a functioning game loop, um, but one thing is just nothing's happening yet. So um, in the future, what would happen is every time you press a key, because it's Right now it's waiting indefinitely for you to press a key. Every time you press a key, it would process the input, update the state, and then redraw the screen. Um, now something we'll have to consider later on is, are we going to wait indefinitely for input? Probably not. Um, that's something we'll have to tackle later on. Uh, what, we'll, what we'll do is we'll have it wait for a certain period of time, and if they don't get any input, if we don't get any input from the user, we'll just continue on with the game. So like if the snake's already moving in a direction, we'll just have it keep moving that way, um, that kind of thing. So, uh, but anyways, I hope you guys like this tutorial. Again, if you do, if you did, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing and setting all notifications on so you get these tutorials right when they come out. Um, feel free to comment below if you have any questions or you know anything really. Uh, I'll make sure to respond and uh, I uh, hope to see you guys in the next tutorial.